my name is Terry Kylo from Path to Understanding. I've been listening to the reflections of those involved in the multi-faith movement about the state of our common work. Sometimes people express themselves with words, a mixture of longing and visions for the future, deep commitment. Other times I heard almost wordless sighs and silences about missed opportunities, difficult challenges, and deep frustrations. First, I've heard people realizing the hope that multi-faith work has to help us live together given our cultural differences. Particularly in this moment of political violence and dehumanizing rhetoric, people from different wisdom traditions coming together is a sign that we can know and love each other. Second, I've heard people feeling really supported by others when they were under the pressure of dehumanizing speech by both hate groups and political leaders. They really felt like we've stood with each other during this difficult time. Even though it's never perfect, it's powerful. Third, I've also heard people across Washington State feeling lonely, and across the nation too. The larger media and social media do not share good news very well, and if it bleeds, it reads, and so good news does not get written. People in one town simply don't know the good work that is happening in the next. Many people feel like they're singing on the prairie, alone, and don't perceive the choir that is all around. Lastly, I've heard people say they would like to start some kind of multi-faith work, but don't know where to begin. One of our approaches at Paths to Understanding has been media. To create Challenge 2.0, a TV show, wisdom from our neighborhood, which all show up on YouTube and major podcasting services, to tell the positive stories that are happening in our communities. Another is social media. But, you know, we all have challenges with social media, as we have to pay Facebook to get our posts even to people who follow or like our page. And research shows that negative messages, false news, travel seven times faster than good news. More than that, these social media companies are writing their code in such a way that powers the divisions, dehumanizations, and violence of our time. Plus, we just don't want to give Facebook our money anymore. Something else is needed in this moment. We need something that can connect us, but not lead us down the wide path to destruction. In response to all of this, we've decided to develop what we are calling the Paths Network. The first part of it will be online courses. These will be available to anyone with a web connection anywhere in the world. We'll have short courses, which are introductory classes that take about an hour or two to complete. We'll have mid-level courses that take oh, somewhere between six and 10 hours to complete, sometimes with live interaction. We're also developing full distance learning courses, offering certificates of completion for people who really want to work deeply in multi-faith or to work on countering dehumanization, particularly of religious communities. But that's not the key part. The key part is we're building an online community. We are creating online groups and topic areas for people to share their questions, wonderings, learnings, and wisdom with one another. It looks a bit like Facebook, but is not social media. We think that the Paths Network will be a way for those of us doing multi-faith work to get connected, to work together, to find partners, and mostly realize that we're not singing alone on the prairie. One of the cool things is that once you become a member of the Paths Network, you can connect to other members who are close to you geographically. We think this will support and enhance people in working together. And of course, because there's wealth and income inequality, we've decided that people can take our courses or be in the network for free. They can make optional financial contributions as well. We are launching the Paths Network soon, and you can find more at www.pathsnetwork.org. We look forward to seeing you there.